Following the recommendations of General Twining, the U.S. Air Force started its official UFO investigation project to collect and analyze as much additional information as possible about these mysterious craft, their characteristics and performance. This program was codenamed Project Sign. Sign evolved into Project Blue Book, which investigated about 11,800 UFO sightings between 1952 and 1969. One of the reports in the files of U.S. Air Force Project Blue Book came from U.S. Navy Commander Graham Bethune. While flying a transport from uh, Keflavik, Iceland to Argentia, Newfoundland, at about 10,000 feet, this was at night, I happened to observe a little bit off of the bow, about 10 or 15 degrees on the water below the horizon, a yellow glow that appeared as though we were approaching a city at night. Since we were over 300 miles from Argentia, I knew that it couldn't be a city, that maybe possibly it were some ships lighted up, and that uh, there were ships in the area that we didn't know about. I asked the, the navigator, and he said, no, there were no ship plots, and that we were not close to land. So I observed it for a while, called it to the attention of Lieutenant Kingdon, who was sitting in the co-pilot seat, he observed it for a while. As we got close, within about 30 or 35 miles, the lights seemed to have a pattern. They were elongated, but it was not a circular-type pattern, possibly the length of a couple of ships or two aircraft carriers, and the width of two aircraft carriers. After observing this for a while, we got within a range of, say, 30 miles, the lights went out. And all we saw in the water was a small halo. This small halo started its approach towards us, turned to an orange, to a fiery red, to almost a purplish red. And it, at about four or 500 feet below us, it stopped its, mo its movement. I had already disengaged the autopilot in order to try to go under this craft, which looked like we were on collision course. And at that time, I noticed that it was not sitting level. The craft was sitting at an angle, about 45 degrees off the bow, and it was staying with us. So it continued to move with us for a few seconds. And of course, behind me, the additional crew was standing, and they, they scattered all over the cockpit. A couple were injured. Then it started its movement away from us, and at that time I could tell it was an intelligent craft of some kind, guided. It came up to take a look at us, and then it started its movement away from us. At that time, some other crew members came up and it looked at what we were observing. I put the autopilot back on, set my course, and walked back aft, and Dr. Mosier was sitting back there, and he was a commander in the Navy at the time. And I asked him, I said, Doc, did you see what we saw? He says, yes. He says it was a flying saucer. I didn't look at it because I don't believe in such things. So at that time, I rushed back to the cockpit, and I told Lieutenant Jones, who had taken my seat, I says, Al, I says, whatever you do, don't tell anybody that we saw a flying saucer because they will probably lock us up when we land. So he said, well, it's too late that I had called Gander Control to see if they had anything on the radar. So at that time, we knew that uh, they knew that we had sighted something. <laughs>